Okay, this is Spencer Colgan. Welcome back to Spencer Colgan as wallpaper. And so we're painting a chair, chair rail. We're painting all of the woodwork in this house. So it's a very tedious process, but still we've got to make the, all the woodwork look new. This, these, walls are, these walls are fine and we don't want to affect the walls. And so while I tape this, I got a call, I got interrupted, and now my phone is on airplane mode so that that doesn't happen again. But I wanted you to see it, and so I taped the whole area, and I ex overextended my tape so that I can take it off. Remember, we gotta do this as quickly as possible. And so, you see this? You see this? It's for me to just rip it right off, okay? So I, I really wish you could have seen it. I, I don't know how to edit those videos, so. <clears throat> I land the tape on the left hand side. You could choose either side. I land it and then I move it with my right hand up and down just to get it exactly under the woodwork because the woodwork is a little crooked. So as you're moving it, you go like an eight inch section, you nail it down, rub it this way. You move it up and down where it's perfectly underneath the, the uh, chair rail, you rub it down with your left thumb, sealing it. Then you take clear caulking. Please make sure that it's clear. And then you're going to seal the area where the paint, sorry, where the tape meets the woodwork. Because there's little nooks and crannies in this orange peel surface. And if air can get in there, so can liquid, so can paint. And so you clog it up with this. Why clear? Because when it dries, it dries clear. And it takes on the color of the surface you painted. So in this case, it's going to look white. If you use a colored caulking, part of the caulking is going to get painted. And the part that it meets where the tape was is going to be white. And so you don't want to use colored caulking. In this case, you could because you're painting a white surface. But get yourself clear caulking if you're going to do this, okay? You understand what I mean? Let's say this were gray. We paint it gray. Our caulking gets covered in gray. The point at which the tape meets the caulking, that little, little edge, what is it? an 80th of an inch, I don't even know. It's gonna be white because it was blocked by the edge of the tape. You understand what I mean? If you don't, please use clear caulking and you will solve the problem. Now, we got it all blocked. We call that being blocked. We embed the tape with our finger. You don't wanna use a scraper here because you'll scratch the surface. You embed it with your thumb, friction, push up hard against it. And now you take your applicator, the brush, and now, <clears throat> You're going to be very quick and uh, these are going to go right back in here. I don't like when YouTubers talk during their videos unnecessarily. Don't you hate it too? Oh, uh, hi. You know, all of a sudden they're telling you about where they went to the store. Who cares? Get on with the video. I hate it. Okay, here we go. So let me do that to you. Okay, as I do this, I want to tell you about something. Now, the lady wanted her woodwork white, right? Now, let me tell you something about white paint. White paint is paint without pigment, right? It's color. Try painting completely bright white paint on woodwork. Guess what's going to happen? You're going to be able to see through it. And you're going to need three coats of paint which is nuts. I'm telling you that your white woodwork already has a color to it. It's called being dirty. And once you have dirt on it, discoloring the surface, you're going to need to paint it multiple times. How do you get around that? I'm gonna tell you a trick. Watch this. Now, this is something that you folks who don't paint regularly are going to be shocked to hear. You're going to put black in the paint, okay? And you painters know the trick. Take a look at that. 
That's a custom color. In Sherwin-Williams, it's called Colgan White. Colgan's my last name. That's what they named it. And what they do is they put a few drops of black in the paint. A few drops, just a few drops. You'll never notice it as the homeowner, but the painter knows. As soon as the painter starts putting the paint on the woodwork, and he's even the best paint, once he sees the transparency of the non-pigmented white paint, and he sees the aged white color, which is already tarnished in color coming through, he's not happy. So what I want you to do is take a frame shot of this, of this uh, lid that I have and get your paint. If you like white woodwork, trust me when I tell you, put a little black in it. That's the color. You bring that to Sherwin-Williams, they'll make that color, okay? And so it's a few drops of black. You can't ever notice it. It goes on white. But because it has some color in it, it covers beautifully. Okay? And it even sticks onto the surface better. Now it's always good if you're a painter, you want to have those brushes. An artist called artist brushes. You get them in um, Michaels. You get some good brushes, spend at least 20 bucks on them, so that when you get to these tight spots, the size of your pinky nail, that you have a professional artist brush to get into those tight spots, all right? Otherwise, you'll be using a huge brush in a tight spot. Little quick note about painting semi-gloss paint on the surface. I don't care if you want to go up and down, left to right, it's good. Different directions is good to get the paint onto the surface, but not as the last stroke when you finish the unit. Whatever unit you're on, consider the thing, whatever you've painted, when the entire surface is wet, maybe it's four feet of molding you're doing, like this is, you want to end touching the surface with the same applicator in the same direction with the same pressure constant. The result is going to be a flawless spray-like finish. So here we go. Don't touch it again. That's it. That just unified all the parts together in one direction, the same pressure, with the same amount of paint on the, on the uh, applicator. Do it on the top. If you keep going back and forth with that cheap brush that you like to buy at the 99 cent store, you're gonna have an unprofessional finish. Don't buy your paint brushes in the, in the dollar store. Get a purdy, spend at least 18 bucks, and you'll have a good finish. All you gotta do is follow these simple tricks, all right? Now, before I finish the video, let me take it off so that you can judge the work. And you know if I failed, of course, I would just do a new video, right? I'm on the camera. Let me show you. Beautiful. Now, remember, there was a black mark on the wall before I started. So far, so good, folks. Don't leave this tape on, folks. Don't be taking dinner and lunch and going, taking a nap. Get the... As soon as you finish, take the tape off. Please, if you want to do it really well, you're going to pull the paint off of the wall. Whatever happens, there's something called a hang time. This, paint can, this tape can only stay on the wall a certain amount of time. After that, I go into houses. People say, oh yeah, I painted last month. The blue tape is still on the ceiling. I'm like, oh man, that, that tape is going to pull off the plaster in the corners. Okay, anyway, here you go. Here's the finish. This is Spencer Colgan from Spencer Colgan is Wallpaper. Thanks for watching my channel. Please click on like and subscribe. Thank you.